We send around 55 to 60 people every year and I've seen people from age 24 to age 50 plus as well going. So there is no age limit as well. And even at the time of interview, we will ask you whether you have secured admission in the universities that you have mentioned on the application form. You might say yes, you might say no. Even at that point, I'll say it is fine. You have time till July. Interview is the last stage where you can notify the panel about any change in your plans. What is a good application versus a bad application? Leadership influencing, mm -hmm. A. Networking, B. Studying in the UK and career plan. We do engage them in other activities that is happening across Pakistan. The Chief Ling alumni should also be engaged. Hello and welcome to Infer Talks, a podcast where I put you in the room with some of the biggest thought leaders from around the world. Today I have with me head of the UK Shivning Scholarships, Pakistan, Ms. Shaila Kayoum. Ms. Kayoum, welcome to Infer Talks. Thank you so much, Osama, for inviting me today. Thank you. All right, ma'am, let's go ahead and start our conversation. And my sure. first question right off the bat is that, you know, you have plenty of students who have just recently graduated or are about to graduate. And then they're also looking for, you know, post-graduation opportunities. Uh, and Chevening certainly happens to be among those top scholarship programs where, you know, most students are really looking to, you know, tap into opportunities. So could you go ahead and explain to us in a very easy manner, like what are the one, two, three and subsequent uh, steps to go ahead and apply for the scholarship program? So thank you, Sama. Uh, so Chevening is UK government scholarship program and we offer one year master's program in any subject in the UK, any university, A. So this is what Chevening is. And uh, this is mainly we actually look for people, those who are passionate to bring change, positive change in the society, those who have vision, those who have clarity about their plans, what they exactly would like to do in their lives, so and those who have leadership potential. So this is mainly we look for. And uh, people, those who are mid-career professionals, so as you said that those who are recently graduated are included, don't worry about that. Because mid-career professional means that we have some flexibility. Uh, even uh, when it comes to work experience from the last four or five years, we've been very flexible. So. You know, uh, uh, fresh graduates, those who have recently done their graduation or th they have done their master's, basically 16 years of education. Right. So they should have two years of ex work experience so they can add up all their internship hours, volunteer work, part-time jobs to, to 2,800 working hours, which is equal to two years work and, experience. And that could also include the work experience that they might have you know, gained while they were doing yes, their while degree studying. as well. Yes, while they're studying. Right. So that's how they are also eligible. Those who have recently graduated or going to uh, uh, do their graduation next year or those who have done their master's even. So 16 years, we do not say that you have graduation or master's. Kya hai. We call it 16 years of education. All right. So that is mainly uh, the criteria to apply for it. Um, and on top of that, they should be passionate about bringing a positive change in their respective area of work. So they should have a plan in hand because it's highly competitive uh, program and we receive applications in thousands. Um, and we send around 55 to 60 people every year. And I've seen people from age 24 to age 50 plus as well going. So there is no age limit as well. So there's no age restriction no, either? No, there isn't. That's very interesting. It's just your story that counts. That okay, you, so yeah. you did speak about, you know, this thing about creating change. So what would be an example of creating change that you could probably, yeah. you know, uh, shed some light on? So creating change means, for instance, if you're studying this specific subject, uh, you should have a clarity what exactly you would like to do in the next five or 10 years. You should have plan in hand and how your study in the UK would add value in your current knowledge mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and how you can bring that knowledge or network from the UK back to Pakistan on your return because there's a declaration that you have to sign while going uh, on evening that you'll come back to Pakistan after completing your one year study in the UK. This is basically brain gain, I must say, thanks to UK government for giving this opportunity to Pakistanis. So um, for instance, if um, you are in, uh, US, you would like to study climate change. So you should have good knowledge of current situation, scenario. You should have a plan in hand what is that thing that you would like to uh, gain from the UK through this master's degree? And uh, because Chevening is a package, basically, it is not just one year classroom study in the in the UK. Mm -hmm. We will connect you with scholars from across the globe, those who will be there 
as Chief Link Scholars, and you will also get the opportunity to meet other students studying in the university. And in, uh, in addition to that, uh, we have Chief Link Secretariat, a dedicated team uh, working for the welfare of uh, our uh, scholars while their time in the UK. Mm -hmm. And they have uh, designed a sort of number of activities for them, uh, which is for the whole year. Uh, it includes a lot of um, uh, sort of workshops, seminars, trips, um, and they will get the opportunity to explore and to experience and to make or build their network there uh, from their respective uh, sort of area of work. So it is actually something that when you go there, you will be student, you will be a professional at the same time because you'll be connected with people from your relevant fields and you will also gain and sharing best practices uh, with scholars of your uh, field and you're bringing back that uh, connection to your country when you're here in Pakistan. And, and Michelle, if I can, uh, you know, take you back to the application process itself. And so one of the questions that I, I often get asked, and I, I did like consult some friends, and they had this question that, uh, you know, particularly about the admission process, and this was precisely this, do they have to have a prior admission secured in some university already before uh, going ahead and applying for the evening itself? And the second was about the timelines, like okay. what... Uh, you know, pro uh, uh, not not the program, but like, uh, what sessions should they be targeting? Should they be focusing on the spring session or the next year's fall session? Okay. What should they really focus on? So, a let me just answer your first part: how to apply. So, only uh, online uh, applications are accepted. So, you have to apply through Chevening website, which is www.chevening.org, and when you'll get there, if you put forward slash Pakistan. So you'll land on Pakistan page. You'll get to know what is on offer for Pakistanis. So this is one year master's program, A. Uh, there are two fellowships that we are offering. One is for uh, specifically for journalists, which mm -hmm. is uh, we called a South Asia journalism program. Um, for journalists, so Pakistan journalists, we get seven journalists from Pakistan, seven from India, one each from Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, and it is in collaboration with Westminster University in the UK. So they have this classroom study, plus their sort of uh, some sort of visits and a uh, few interactions with media in the UK. So that is one fellowship. The other fellowship is called OCIS, which is uh, Oxford Center of Islamic Studies Fellowship. It is mm -hmm. for people, those who are uh, doing some research, you know, Islamic scholars, those who are, uh, those who are into research already so they can apply for that fellowship so these are the opportunities that we are currently offering uh, in pakistan I, i'll tell you how to apply i'm just trying to you know explain what exactly in it for people and whom we are targeting and in addition to that we this year chivni pakistan we have secured two new partnerships one is with swindon town football club which is purely purely for people in sports Hmm. So again, I would uh, appreciate uh, UK government's uh, support uh, that they are uh, taking care of everyone, no matter which area you're working in, even in sports. So people, those who are in sports, they can apply for coaching, sports sciences through this uh, partnership uh, scheme. And we have also secured another partnership with University of Essex, which is for people working in environment, climate change and heritage and museums. So, if you know heritage or museum, if we are there, then Pakistan you know, can flourish like anything. So, for the capacity building of those professionals also, we are also offering these two new opportunities in addition to all other subjects. So, do not uh, think that we are confined to these two areas. Any subject, any university in the UK, but these are two new uh, partnerships that I just talked about and how to apply. So, Chevening website is the platform, online application. Um, once you go there, You'll click and the application form will open. So what is required? Your personal details, educational uh, qualification, and there are four areas that we have uh, asked questions from on the application form. I'll talk through it later in your questions. So as far as timelines are concerned, uh, achieving application window will open on 12 September. All right. As I said, only uh, online application will be accepted. Um, so at the time of submission of your form, you don't need to have uh, admission in the university. You just need to do some research, what exactly you would like to study. Uh, and it should be a proper research. You know? So you don't need to secure an admission, at a prior time. admission no, because already the application, at any university? No. no? Right. Because application window is open from 12 September 
टिल सेवन्थ नवम्बर टू मंथ्स का अप्रॉक्सीमेटली पीरियड है एंड वी डो नॉट रिक्वायर आइल्स एट दिस पॉइंट बट अगैन वी रिवाइज अ पॉलिसी एवरी ईयर सो वैन एप्लीकेशन विंडो विल ओपन ऑन ट्वेल्थ सेप्टेम्बर ओनली देन यूल बी एबल टू सी वेदर इट इज़ रिक्वायर्ड और नॉट बिकॉज इन द लास्ट टू थ्री ईयर्स वी हैव रिमूव दिस रिक्वायरमेंट सो वाइल फिलिंग योर एप्लीकेशन फॉर्म यू डोंट नीड आइल्स यू डोंट नीड एडमिशन इन द यूनिवर्सिटी सिंपली फिल आउट दैट एप्लीकेशन फॉर्म एंड द टाइम लाइन्स आर बेसिकली दिस इज़ फ्राम सेप्टेम्बर टू सेप्टेम्बर सो वी स्टार्ट आर रिक्रूटमेंट प्रोसेस वेल इन टाइम इट्स काइंड ऑफ एट और नाइन मंथ्स का रिक्रूटमेंट प्रोसेस होता है अभी जो एप्लीकेशन विंडो खुली है दिस इज फॉर एकेडेमिक ईयर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव ठीक है वी विल स्टार्ट रिक्रूटिंग पीपल फ्राम नाव ऑन आपने एप्लीकेशन फॉर्म को भरना है यू नीड टू डू थोर रिसर्च अबाउट सब्जेक्ट दैट यू लाइक टू स्टडी इन द ऑर्डर ऑफ प्रेफरेंस आपने तीन यूनिवर्सिटीज और सब्जेक्ट्स मोरल एस सेम बिकॉज इफ यू हैव इफ यू हैव लीडरशिप पोटेंशियल एंड इफ यू हैव प्लान इन हैंड सो आपकी ट्रेजेक्ट्री बड़ा फोकस्ड है सो यू आर गोइंग टूवर्ड्स वन लाइन सो इफ यू इफ स्टडिंग क्लाइमेट चेंज तो अदर सब्जेक्ट जो सेकेंड प्रायोरिटी पे आप तीन प्रायोरिटीज हैं एक सब्जेक्ट ए दिस यूनिवर्सिटी सब्जेक्ट बी दिस यूनिवर्सिटी सब्जेक्ट सी दिस यूनिवर्सिटी सो सब्जेक्ट शुड बी मोर ऑलर सेम यूनिवर्सिटीज कैन बी डिफरेंट पहले आई वुड सजेस्ट कि वो वाला लें दैट यू ड्रीम ऑफ ऑक्सफर्ड से पढ़ना है कैम्ब्रिज से पढ़ना है ठीक है एंड दूसरी और तीसरी रियलिस्टिक में वे यू थिंक यू कैन गेट एडमिशन दैट नॉट रियली रिड्यूस योर चांसेज ऑफ गेटिंग through the uh, selection process itself so what happens is ke aapne jab application fill out kar diya mm-hmm. aapne course aur university wahan pe kar diya mm-hmm. uh, mention phir aapke aur uh, 7th november is the deadline hum aapko inform karenge february mein ke whether you have been shortlisted for interview or not if you are mm-hmm. shortlisted aur aap interviews mein aa rahe hain we will conduct interviews in march and april right and even at the time of interview we will ask you some whether you have uh, secured admission in the universities that you have mentioned on the application form you might say yes you might say no all right even at that point i'll say it is fine you have time till july so aapke paas ample time hai you submit your application in november start applying in the university then because there are two parallel processes uh chevening is a funding stream it's just funding that british high commission fcdo is providing it's a funding stream parallel to that you have to run your a university application process start applying in those three universities or courses that you have mentioned on the application form aapke paas july tak ka time hai agar aapko humne interview kiya march april mein aur aapko june mein pata lag gaya whether you are selected or not if you are selected you will receive conditional offer letter from chevening and the condition will be that you have to provide us unconditional offer letter from one of these universities that you have mentioned on the application form by july but what if ma'am you, you know you end up getting an admission in any university which is not really mentioned on the list or you know the three universities that yeah. any applicant might have identified so it happens most of the times so that when we interview them in march and april and mm-hmm. when we ask them whether you have secured admission or not they right. might they say that you know i could not get time to you know secure my admission um but after submitting my application i've realized that this course at this xyz university is better than what i've mentioned on the application form right. so interview is the last stage where you can notify the panel about any change in your plans because you know what uh, whatever you have written on the application form is representing you it's a four stage recruitment process when you submit your application there's automatic sifting through this online system then we have two um, uh, assessors in london academic reviewer and uh, regional reviewer they mm-hmm. assess your application and they score it we do the shortlisting here in pakistan uh, a number of people are involved in the shortlisting process a number of people are involved in the recruitment uh, final uh, interview process every day we have different panel members mm. um so we always have uh, uh, one alumni with us and one uh, uh, uk based staff member with us uh, at the time of interview um so when they come and they say that you know they could not secure admission but this is the new university at the time of interview we just you know uh, uh, either approve it or do not approve it because they have to be aligned with the whole application that they have already submitted so yes this happened uh, many times people came they changed their uh, university courses but at the time of interview that is the last opportunity but then you are bound to secure admission in that university because the whole application is what is representing your plan basically so uh, so what you're suggesting is that you can secure an admission in some other university as well but as long as that program that you've secured your admission in 
is quite consistent with what you've actually exactly. mentioned in your application yes. process. And you must notify the panel mm -hmm. when you're appearing for interview. That mm -hmm. is the last opportunity where you can notify. And so then that's, then that sort of you know brings me to this question. What is a good application versus a bad application? Okay. What would a good application really have to make it stand out from the rest of the crowd? Yeah. Thank you so much for asking this question because we receive applications in thousands. Worldwide, uh, last year, which mm -hmm. was uh, 20, 23, 24, uh, mm -hmm. uh, session, that we received 60,000 worldwide applications mm -hmm. from Pakistan around 30, uh, over 3,500 eligible applications. And we conducted 239 interviews and selected 50, uh, 54 applicants. Uh, so what, matter, what matters is your story, your real, uh, real story, your vision, what exactly you would like to do. So there are four areas that we assess uh, you uh, through the application format at the time of interview. Leadership and influencing, mm -hmm. A. Networking, B. Studying in the UK and career plan. So we have asked these four questions on the application form. And how you need to answer, how, what are the tips? Let me just give you a few tips as yeah. well. While uh, attempting these uh, four questions, uh, you need to give, uh, support your answers with an example, evidence-based uh, answers. And give example either from your personal or professional life, small or big, no it does not matter. You know, you can say I stopped someone from cutting a tree from mm. this small to any big example where you led a team to achieve something big. Um, so leadership and influencing, how did you use your leadership skills to achieve something positive by engaging, influencing people around you? So that is something, you know, it should be in flow. And we always say that you should adopt STAR approach, which is situation, target, action, result. Set up a situation because whoever is reading your application for the first time, you're not there. Your words are there. Don't go after fancy words, you know, don't use thesaurus. English is not our first language, we understand. No. Um, but uh, good enough to understand lectures in the university, good enough to understand when we are reading your answers. So whatever you're mentioning should be simple in a flow. Uh, star, situation, target, action, result. What was the situation? Let's suppose you say, because uh, there was a flood. Mm -hmm. You know, you can always take example of uh, you a difficult situation you were in. and But right. you have to set scenario to let reader understand the situation. What was the target or objective that you would like, uh, wanted to achieve uh, uh, through the action that you took? And what are, were those leadership sort of uh, skills or actions that you took mm -hmm. and how did you influence people around you and you achieve that specific uh, objective. So that's how you complete your answer, leadership influencing. Likewise for networking, it's not about okay, I have a lot of followers on Instagram mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Facebook. It is about how you built your network while studying in the UK right. and how you bring back that network, wealth of network back to Pakistan to help you achieve your objectives on your return and how you utilize your achieving alumni network in Pakistan to, uh, you know, to bring positive change in the society. This is what networking is. Studying in the UK is basically why UK, mm -hmm. why this subject, right. and why this university. So you should, whoever has done thorough research, we can tell, you know, at the time of interview while uh, reading through your answers. Um, so good application is always when they have real clear sort of uh, direction or clarity about their plans, why this subject, what are those gaps or those things that they, they, will, they would like to get or attain from studying mm -hmm. uh, in the UK mm -hmm. and how this would benefit them on their return. Why that specific university? There are, there are, there are cases where people you know, opt for one specific university while the other university is known for best for that particular subject they are opting for. So we advise them also, why don't you consider applying for this university? We also, you know, uh, but again, we expect whoever is coming for Chevening should have plan in hand, should, ha should be able to secure admission to the university. As I said, Chevening is a funding stream. Right. So studying in the UK means uh, you should know why UK, historical ties, which is, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's a fact. But again, come up with your real answer. How do right. you feel um, about your subject, mm -hmm. about your university and career plan? Career plan is something, again, your leadership comes there. Leader has a plan. So how you see yourself in the next five or 10 years, put it on, on paper, uh, realistically, uh, using that course, that knowledge, that network, how you would like to achieve that specific 
goal that you have set uh, for yourself in the next five or ten. So, minutes. if there are a few constants that one can identify, leadership, networking, and uh, studying in the UK, clarity about what they are going to study, right? Why they are going to study there. So it's a clarity of your career plan exactly. or your career trajectory, exactly. which is something that is being looked into the yes. application itself. Let me also ask you one more important question, and this is primarily about the programs. Does Chevening actually have a preference of certain programs? Um, you know, when applicants are actually applying for the scholarship, like does the uh, you know does the Chevening really have, or does really really? indicate that you know certain programs would be preferred over the other ones there isn't any criteria so we we always say whoever is best who mm -hmm. we all, we always tag chevening if you have a leadership potential mm -hmm. you must apply for chevening regardless uh, of the program that you are applying in yes any 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 subject and we let you live your ideas come right. uh, come to us with your ideas uh, with your vision mm -hmm. and let us uh, provide you those opportunities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so if i may ask now this is an important question and this is primarily about the expenses that could really be covered during the scholarship itself uh, what kind of expenses does Chevening really cover it is fully funded and when we say fully funded I, what does that one mean one of my exactly? scholars said shall i did not have to buy even a pencil throughout the year it's it's a luxurious program i must say from the point you're recruited till the point you will come back to pakistan you're fully covered uh so it's a visa fee it's your health surcharge it's your living expense your tuition fee no matter whatever fee it is fully funded except for mba courses there's a fee cap for mba courses which is 22000 mm -hmm. otherwise uh, um this year one of our scholars is going to oxford university and we are paying around 32 or 34000 pounds for him mm -hmm. so people are going for all subjects all universities and thanks to uk government thanks to british high commission we are uh funding their their plans their course and providing them opportunity uh to build their network the next question then is like what kind of activities do you really expect your scholars to engage in or what are some activities that chevening really encourages its uh, students to go ahead and participate in while they're in the uk yeah thank you so much so there are two mandatory events once mm -hmm. they are recruited when they will arrive in the uk there's welcome event All so right. all chevening scholars from across the globe will gather together and they will get the opportunity to know each other oh. so it's a very interactive kind of uh, event uh, where they meet and they get to know who's from their sort of field so that is one thing which is so right from the get go people get to network with each other uh, so th there's a social uh, media platform which is called chevening connect uh, right. and through that uh, that platform uh, we have other platform within that which is like linkedin facebook twitter everything is there mm -hmm. so we have also uh, developed few thematic sort of um, areas for them if for instance if you would like to speak to someone who's a journalist uh, sitting on the other side of uh, uh, the world so through that chevening connect you can always very easily take out journalist whichever city or country you would like to work with or would like to have some sort of uh, Uh, you know sharing best practice or advice or you know some knowledge you can always get connected and then um, a chevening secretariat a dedicated team in london mm -hmm. um they are they have their uh, officers for uh, each strand welfare mm -hmm. officer uh, immigration officer mm -hmm. uh, those who's uh, working to connect scholars so there there are trips there are seminars um that we expect our scholars to engage um, in and to contribute there are volunteering opportunities uh, which university provides and also uh, chevening secretariat they have some fun filled activities like chevening relay as well um so if you go and visit our website you'll find out uh, you know a lot about a lot of activities so for instance 3 4 years back chevening uh, scholars from pakistan arranged one cricket match with uh, um uh, scholars from india Oh. So they had a very interesting match and all very you know it was fun filled so who won? <laughs> we won <laughs> So we won um so there is another mandatory mandatory event uh, that everyone has to attend which is we call fair relevant again when they are coming back after completing their study they have to have this event uh, where they get together again mm -hmm. and we provide them opportunity to meet because we designed the event in a way so you get the opportunity to get to know each other because so does does chevening also encourage uh, 
you know, students that are there uh, to sort of, you know, get engaged in the kind of activities that might be more relevant to their area yes. of expertise. Yes. Yes, because Chiefening Secretariat is working closely with them. Once you're recruited, for mm -hmm. instance, if Sama is recruited for Chiefening, mm -hmm. so then, then afterwards you will be hand over to our um, uh, Secretariat. They will take care of you from that point. So there will be in a the close UK. liaison yes. or a closer liaison yes. with the students that are actually in the UK. Yes, so whatever your requirement, period. for instance, you would like to uh, arrange something or you would like to meet someone from a specific area, you can mm -hmm. always talk to your program officer. And they support and they take care of you uh, throughout your time in the UK. That's quite very nice. Yeah. Now, let's speak about a very important topic. And this is especially about, you know, the women of our country who yeah. really want to, you know, tap opportunities like these, which can help them, you know, excel in their field, you know, tap into opportunities of higher education. So then let me ask you, does Chevening really provide any counseling services to women from far-flung areas who might really not know how to go about the application process itself. Uh, what does it do, uh, like, you know, prior to the opening up of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the application season itself to help such applicants? Yeah. Thank you, Sama, for asking this question because I really wanted to mention that. Uh, there was time till 2013. We literally used to wish or struggle to get female on board for achieving. We used to get very few applications. What was the reason? Um, so we gradually, you know, we literally went out and knocked doors uh -huh. of all sort of uh, areas. We went to Chamber of Commerce, we went to Press Club, we went to all ministries, we went to uh, uh, all, uh, you know, public sector, private sector, universities, uh, civil service uh, academies, and, uh, you know, we conducted separate session for judges, for lawyers, uh, for other professionals, and uh, separate sessions for female uh, professionals as well. So let me give you an example. For instance, from Balochistan, uh, uh, again, as I said, it was in 2013, it was 6% uh, uh, female uh, made the cohort um, and from the last four years it's more than 55 percent uh, women are going so for uh, let's uh, pick from Balochistan, the province of Balochistan uh, from across Pakistan I'm oh. just giving you an example of Balochistan how mm. we catered as you said uh, women from you know far-flung areas yeah. or from marginalized society or from where you know the internet problems are so thanks to our um, achieving alumni with their help uh, we reached out to women uh, in Balochistan. We conducted number of webinars, number of webinars, online sessions for them, and catered all women working in different uh, working in different fields. Um, and uh, you would be surprised to know from the last two three years, our uh, top ranking female scholar of the year is from Balochistan. Oh, wonderful! And this year there were three because there was a tie between uh, three uh, top ranking. They scored equally. Uh, two of them are from Balochistan. Mm -hmm. Jalila Heather uh, in twenty either two three years back she was our Asma Jahangir Award winner. So we, we have brilliant. Uh, you know, uh, scholars uh, from Balochistan, Gilgit Baltistan. Let me also tell you, this year, uh, I'm very I'm very pleased to mention, this year we are celebrating Chevening 40th anniversary, launched in uh, 1983. This is 40th year of Chevening, and we are celebrating 40th anniversary. We celebrated 35th anniversary in 2018. And that time, um, Chevening Secretariat launched a sort of, a, what do you call uh, campaign mm -hmm. and they identified a uh, change maker from across the globe 35 change maker from across across the globe to mark 35th anniversary and from uh, countries where there were like one there were none from Pakistan there were two female scholars those who were identified as change makers one was Amna Zamir who's uh, first female judge from uh, Gilgit Baltistan Interesting. and um, Abia Akram who's running an organization with the name Special Talent Exchange Program. And mashallah, they have created an impact uh, in the society and they are benefiting people um, uh, with, you know, uh, Abhi is working to benefit people with disability, with special needs, uh, and uh, um, Amna is working, you know, exceptionally good in her uh, area, which is judiciary. That's very so, interesting. So, yeah. so is Achievening still providing these... Um you know, counseling services by way of their, you know, extended networks through alumni. Yes. 
Uh, yes, you a lot know, of our alumni. All right. So we have launched this Chivni Mentoring Scheme in 2018. Since then, we are running this scheme and we are helping women and uh, people from marginalized society and we want to bring everyone in and, it. And, and where, where could they really benefit from this uh, mentoring program? So for, for, for example, we launched it in um, two areas mm -hmm. for struggling female lawyers All and right. for struggling female entrepreneurs, those who are in the early stage of career. Mm -hmm. So achieving uh, scholars, uh, one of our achieving scholar, Asya uh, Sahil, who's uh, running... Uh, Marshall, a really good business uh, in Pakistan, entrepreneur, successful mm -hmm. entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and she did her master's on gender. Uh, so she helped uh, women. Uh, she identified women because this was her area of work, and uh, she designed sort of capacity building program for them. And now six of them are registered with Lahore Chamber of Commerce, and three of them are running uh, a successful business. Likewise, mm -hmm. um, one of our scholars, uh, Hassan Shah, and uh, there were a few more, those were lawyers. They helped people from Christian community, those were lawyers, and two female uh, uh, scholar, uh, sorry, um, uh, female lawyers um, uh, were their mentees, and now they're working uh, in their firm as their associate. So these are success stories. We are running this mentoring scheme. We have launched this for journalism as well. And um, Adnan Namir was one of our Chivni mentor, and uh, one of our uh, Sahar from BBC, she's our Chivni fellow. She uh, participated, uh, Rashid Safi Sah participated as mentor, and they helped people, those who are journalists, male, female, from far flung areas, and they designed their capacity building program for them. So th we have a lot of opportunities, and we conduct a lot of briefing sessions how to apply. Our alumni are helping us the, in their cities, in their areas in their offices they are guiding people how to fill out application forms. well more power to the women and yes. more power to your mentors that are really yes. helping achieving in this noble cause all right ma'am let's uh, go ahead and you know bring your attention to another important question and this is more about you know the the, the very condition that you mentioned previously uh, you said any alumni who gets done with their degree has to actually come back and serve in Pakistan uh, could you like sort of walk us through what really is the condition like? So when you get selected for achieving, so achieving, as I said earlier, this is brain gain. Mm -hmm. So we want people to get uh, uh, knowledge, uh, skills from the UK and come back and serve for the benefit of their country. And is there, so is the, there like a stipulated period for which yes, they should two, serve? Yes, two in? years. So when you're uh, selected, so there's one declaration that you have to sign mm -hmm. that you'll come back after completing one year study in the UK and you will stay in Pakistan for two years before pursuing any other plans. So right. This is what you have to sign. Uh, and th and then you will be awarded achieving scholarship. All right. Yes. And, and what happens, you know, if you have, say, some some graduates who were there in the United Kingdom uh, who end up getting themselves enrolled in a PhD program yeah. elsewhere yeah. other than their own native country uh, and they get an admission in a PhD program then what what happens uh, you know in, in terms of treating cases like that so thanks Scott till today uh, all our scholars have been very uh, uh, you know uh, honest they've kept their part of the promise yes. and That's they great. came back all right, and that is something that Chivning really encourages, yes. is that for their alumni to come back and serve for, for at least a period of two years yeah. before. Yeah, so you know, the scholars, when they come back, then we call plans. them alumni. So when they All complete right. their studies, then they are alumni. And it's a transition phase. When mm -hmm. they come here, we host one event at High Commissioner's Residence. Mm -hmm. We welcome them here in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. We connect them with uh, uh, with officials at the British High Commission, with uh, former or senior uh, achieving scholars, mm -hmm. and uh, and with achieving uh, platform, mm -hmm. uh, alumni platform. So, uh, you know, that is that is very, you know, uh, evident uh, with the fact that everyone came back because we recruit right kind of people. Then let me ask you about the alumni itself. How does Chivning really help the alumni, which is coming back to Pakistan, in terms of, you know, not just getting the much needed uh, post-graduation exposure, but how does Chivning really help them in terms of, you know, finding the right kind of job opportunities, in terms of job placement? Does Chivning really 
help its alumni towards that end so as i said when they come back we welcome them back and we connect them with chevening alumni and with british high commission and mm-hmm. we also whenever we are doing recruitment and uh, we also share our uh, advert uh, advertisements with our chevening alumni we have over 2000 chevening alumni in pakistan um and all are connected um so we have uh, our chevening representatives you must say um in different cities as well so if there's any job opportunity they have created a lot of whatsapp group and through social media they share these job opportunities with each other we also mm-hmm. uh, you know forward any if someone ask us to because we need to keep data protection as a priority so whenever someone would like to disseminate the message they send it to us and then we send it to our alumni um as far as chevening alumni uh, engagement is concerned this is also part of my job um so we are their main point of contact when they come back to pakistan and we have every year we have um, a sort of a number of activities um you know on calendar for them to engage with for instance we launched chevening debates back in 2013 and we have worked on uh, with uh, from an alumni platform uh we did a lot of debates on uh, for instance tax reforms civil service reforms um, in collaboration with civil service academy tax reforms where uh, we invited um, people from all stakeholders from business from government from private sector um and from you know other uh, organizations working uh, uh, on this uh, issue then we work on women rights uh, women role in nation building so that's how chevening alumni are working and uh, you know contributing back through these debates uh, through mentoring scheme a lot of other you know uh, seminars workshops and they have other networks where they are facilitating people in their respective areas um, so within uh, 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 the group there's chevening group in each mm-hmm. organization um and they keep on meeting we organize uh, chevening alumni engagement uh, activities for uh, for them as well Uh, throughout the year so we have iftar sort of reception at high commissioner's uh, residence uh, we have sometime eid lunch uh, at uh, thanks to high commissioner deputy high commissioner and political counselor and senior officials that they host and we do engage them in other activities that is happening across pakistan the chevening alumni should also uh, be engaged uh, uh, and should provide opportunity where they co- they could contribute uh, through their skills so chevening continues to give ample opportunities exactly. to its alumni to stay exactly. connected with each other exactly and about you know recent it's developments that it's a lifetime uh, relationship let me also share we published one impact report 2022 mm-hmm. may and um, 19 chevening scholars uh, uh, you know uh, are head of states either president or prime minister or head of states um so and report says that 99% have progressed in their respective fields and are employed so chevening itself is an opportunity that make you uh, an asset uh, for organization and uh, your chances of getting uh, employment and progression is much more when you come back and so before we wrap up our conversation ma'am uh my question is does chevening also partner with uh, different universities to sensitize sensitize students uh, for example you know who are probably in their final semester yes. you know go ahead and explore opportunities being that are being offered by yes. you know the chevening scholarship itself yes we do that um recently we went to um nast mm-hmm. we went to lahore universities lahore college women universities punjab university nca we went to bnu so yes we do uh, briefing sessions in collaboration with universities and uh, also with other organizations uh, in public and private sector so we do such collaborations that's that's year. that's really wonderful <laughs> Nishala Kayum thank you so much for coming over and you know walking our audience through thank about you. the scholarship program itself and we really hope that all such prospective uh, applicants that are going to go ahead and try this year we wish them all the best and i'm really grateful to you for providing us this opportunity especially when it it is real you know right time for us to promote chevening application window will open on 12th september uh, and it will close on 7th of november only online applications are accepted through chevening website which is www.chevening.org and i wish everyone good luck who are, who are planning to apply and uh, do uh, listen to this interview and get some tips from there thank, thank you so much thank you for adding this thank very you. important last bit thank you bye bye thank you so much for staying with us through this conversation with ms shala kayum
Our team works very hard to make this work possible. And it would mean the world to us if you could like and share our content to show your support. And if you'd like to stay informed on upcoming podcasts and other work, please hit the bell icon.